I always ask for expectations to be kept low so that I can exceed them, but <clears throat> that didn't happen. <laughs> To have found your way here today, some of you as Flashpoint's first bachelor degree graduates, I like your beard, each of you has significant achievements, I feel like Katy Perry, both in school and already out there in the real world. I know some of you have already worked for Second City, The Mill, Three Ri Thrill Ride, and The Onion. And let's be real, if you can work for Second City and The Onion, you must be hilarious and I wanna be your friend, so find me afterwards. <clears throat> To see so much success before you graduate is both exciting and empowering, and I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I'm honored to commemorate this day with you alongside your teachers, your peers, your family, and your friends. But I have something to confess. Selfishly, I'm totally, totally excited to be here, but I'm conflicted. I'm excited because I get an honorary degree from Tribeca Flashpoint College, and you can be at bet I will be bragging about that to my friends as hu often as humanly possible. I ev may even take my diploma to dinner tonight and set it in the center of the table, just so everybody can see it. <clears throat> the reason Peter asked me to be here today is because of what my business stands for and because I have a unique position to tell you how to use social media to build your personal brand and your reputation. You see, I run a business called Spin Sucks, as you heard. <clears throat> it started as a blog in 2006 as a response to the perception that people have of the PR industry. When you tell someone you do PR for a living, you get one of two responses. The first is, oh, you're a spin doctor. Or, my favorite, ah, oh, yes, you lie for a living. <laughs> awesome. That's my favorite one because, in fact, I don't lie for a living, and most PR professionals do not. Sure, just like every industry, there are ethical human beings and there are not so ethical human beings. The problem with my industry, of course, is most people have seen way too many movies, and we all know movies are totally representative of real life. <clears throat> So Spin Sucks was born as a way for us to showcase all of the great things that PR professionals do every single day. Then a book came out of it, and now it's actually a real business that generates real money. It turns out people are really attracted to people who have integrity, who are ethical, and who stand up for what they believe in. But the real reason I'm conflicted to have to have to figure out what to say to this particular class at this particular time is because check technology is changing so very quickly, not only how we work, but how we live. I want you to think about that from your own perspective. What you learned about the tools available to you as freshmen have completely changed, or maybe no longer even exist. I have a friend who is a creative director at Harpo, and she talks all the time about how you have to use Photoshop every single day or you'll get lost in all of the changes. Now I want you to extend that beyond that one piece of software and think about how technology is constantly changing our lives before our very eyes, every single day. I mean, Microsoft is working on holoportation, which allows you to port yourself into a location via a virtual reality headset and a TV screen. I hope you're not too young to know this. It is a classic, and you are graduating from a media arts school, after all. You know the original Star Wars, the one from the 70s? I was only like two, so let's be real. Um, <laughs> Princess Leia left a message for Obi-Wan Kenobi through R2-D2 and a hologram. That's actually going to be a very real thing in just a few years. Think about it. Now you can attend Thanksgiving dinner and be back in your condo before Uncle Rich gets drunk and starts po talking politics. <laughs> Even if your parents live 3,000 miles away. I'm sorry, parents. It's a very real thing. I don't like it either. Not to mention driverless cars, jetpacks that allow you to fly, 3D printed food, and sun-powered charging for our phones, our laptops, and our tablets, and maybe even our brains so we no longer have to sleep. Think how much you could get done without sleep. A ton. It's scary, it's spooky, and it's really freaking cool. But the truth of the matter is this. When I'm asked for advice from newly graduated young professionals, I always provide the three same tips. Number one. Please stop posting photos of yourself and your friends at the bar doing belly shots. In fact, just stop posting photos of yourself at the bar, 
period. Number two, remember that things, even though they're supposed to disappear, live forever. And number three, always, always, always negotiate your salary. But not just your salary, negotiate everything. You'll notice that two of those things have to do with social media and one not so much. In my business, we have lots of young professionals join our ranks. When they have the kinds of education and experience that you have, it's ridiculously fun to work with them. That's the really good news. The bad news is, after 11 years of running a business, I have ever only had one, one young professional ask for more than I offered. And in fairness, it wasn't him who asked. It was his dad. <laughs> yep, his dad picked up the phone and he called me. And he said, this offer you've presented my son is a lowball offer, and I will not pretend he should entertain it. I told him I was very happy to have that conversation with his son, but I would not negotiate with him. Hung up the phone. A few days later, I was in a meeting in my office with the door closed when someone barged in without knocking. I will never forget the look on my assistant's face as she tried to prevent this man from coming in and then realizing I may actually kill her for allowing it. It was this kid's father. He got up into my face literally two inches from my nose and told me I would make a different offer to his son or he would have something to say about it. <clears throat> Imagine if this is your dad. <laughs> no. <laughs> While trying not to wet my pants from fear, I calmly, or as calmly as I could muster, told him to leave my office. Thankfully, the meeting I was in was with two men, and they helped to escort him out. I'm actually not sure what would have happened if I'd been there alone. So I guess I have four piece of, pieces of advice. And the fourth is, please don't let your parents negotiate your salary. <laughs> you wouldn't think I'd have to say this, but here we are. It doesn't look good for you, and trust me, the offer will be rescinded. And that goes for any kind of, of work, freelance, hourly, whatever it is that you're going to do, you do the negotiation. Absolutely, you should talk to your parents about it, but please don't let them be the ones to make the phone call. Here's the thing. You may be young, but you are significant. Go back to all of the places I listed the, at the beginning where you already have real world experience. You are significant. What you've learned, your talent, your unique skills, organizations need all of that. So don't let being young overshadow that significance. Don't be afraid to ask for, for, for more money. Don't be afraid to ask for more time, for more responsibility, for more autonomy, for more influence within co teamwork, collaboration, and decision making. The only person who looks out for you is you. So be good to you. Sure, you'll have bosses and managers and supervisors and people that you work with who will fight for you, but they won't know what you want unless you ask for it. The worst you're going to hear is no, and as it turns out, that's not the end of the world. Look at it as an opportunity to be able to go at it a different way and eventually get what you want. Here's what else I can offer, and it's something that my mom said to my four siblings and me when we were growing up. We heard it so often, that we rolled our eyes every time we heard it. You may, by the end of this speech, be rolling your eyes as well. She said to us, every time we left the house, remember who you are and what you stand for. I want you to think about that for a minute. Remember who you are and what you stand for. This applies to life both online and off. Because I spend the majority of my time online, I have the unique opportunity to see the stupid things that people do without really thinking about it, and of course being able to armchair quarterback it all. I'm reminded of the woman who is a communications veteran working for one of 2014's hottest, hottest startups. She knows how to use social media effectively. She knows how to build a brand and reputation online. She is extremely experienced and savvy, and she made a gigantic mistake. She went to South Africa during the holidays to visit her family, and she was a little bored during her layovers, so she turned to Twitter, like many of us do, although maybe it's not Twitter anymore, Snapchat. <clears throat> during the trip, she tweeted little jokes about travel and her fellow pa passengers. There was one she tweeted as she left JFK for London. Dear German dude, you're in first class. It's 2014. Get some deodorant. 
My inner monologue as I inhale BO, thank heaven for pharmaceuticals. Oh, it gets better. <laughs> then, while on a layover at Heathrow, chili, cucumber sandwiches, bad teeth, back in London. <laughs> and then, before the final leg of her trip to Cape Town, she tweeted, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding, I'm white. Yep. She chuckled to herself as she pressed send on this last one, then wandered around Heathrow for half an hour sporadically checking her phone. No one replied, which didn't surprise her. She had only 170 Twitter followers. She boarded the plane. It was an 11-hour flight, so she slept. When the plane landed in Cape Town and was taxiing on the runway, she turned on her phone, and right away she had a text from somebody she hadn't spoken to since high school. It said, I'm so sorry to see what's happening. She looked at it totally baffled. Then another text, you need to call me immediately. This was from her best friend. And then her phone rang, and it was her best friend. And she said, you are the number one worldwide trending Twitter, or tr Twitter, worldwide trend on Twitter right now. The number one worldwide trend on Twitter right now. People were furious. They called her racist, they wanted her head, and they got it. Not literally, of course, but figuratively. She lost her job, she closed her Twitter account, and she went into hiding outside of the United States for more than a year. When she finally told her side of the story, she admitted she was trying to be funny, but now realizes she's not a writer on South Park and had no business tweeting anything she thought to be making a statement on white privilege or racism. What a hard lesson for a human being to have to learn to be dragged through the coals by strangers because you thought you were being funny. And what the heck, you only have 170 Twitter followers and you imagine those people totally get your sense of humor until you tweet something publicly and someone not in your core group of friends sees it and then it becomes a complete lapse of judgment. She forgot the three tips. One, do not post anything online that would embarrass yourself. Two, Everything you post lasts forever. She deleted the tweet, but I guarantee you, if you just go Google South Africa racist tweet right now, well, not right now, after this, <laughs> you will find it. It lasts forever. And the third thing that was that while she wasn't negotiating a salary, she didn't negotiate her way out of the mess. She went into hiding instead, and it took her more than a year to tell her side of the story. I'm fairly certain we can all agree none of us ever want to be there. My mom isn't the only one with smart quips in our family. My dad always used to tell us never to put anything in writing that could be used against you later. You'd think he was a lawyer, but no. He just knew that that kind of advice would follow us throughout our lives, and now I bestow it upon you. This goes to the belly shots from the bar, the meant-to-be-funny tweets, or even just venting about a friend, a colleague, or worse, your boss or client. That's bad, and it happens, so let's not do it. As I stand here today and look out among you, I will remind you that everything you post online lives forever. I want you to think about that as you go out into this world. Be smart about what you post, but more, have integrity, which means you always do the right thing, especially when no one is looking. If you are honest, if you have integrity, if you are ethical, if you speak before you post, if you think before you speak or post online, if you keep your head about you, if you learn how to negotiate and aren't fearful to ask for what you want, if you remember that you are significant and you have immense skills and talents, and if you remember who you are and what you stand for, go ahead, roll your eyes, your personal brand will be achieved both online and off. Your reputation will stay intact and you will never become the number one worldwide trend, trending topic on Twitter. <laughs>